Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean Campbell and today I'm going to show you how to implement the prototype design pattern in C Sharp. The prototype design pattern is a creational design pattern that specifies the kind of objects to create using a prototypical instance and creates new objects by copying this prototype. In simpler terms, the prototype pattern is like making photocopies of something. Instead of creating a new object from scratch every time, you can just copy an existing one and make some adjustments if needed. This is useful when creating new objects that are complicated to construct or that take a lot of time to create. Okay, so let's have a look at the UML class diagram of the prototype design pattern. Here we have a prototype interface that provides a clone method that allows client code to make a clone of a given concrete prototype. In this case, it'll either be concrete prototype one or concrete prototype two. And you'll see that each of these concrete prototypes implement the clone method. And when they are invoked, it'll return a copy of itself. Now, as mentioned, the prototype pattern is particularly useful when an object takes very long to construct or when it's extremely resource intensive to create a specific object. In other words, the first time that you construct the object or concrete prototype, you'll have to do it the normal way using the new keyword. But the next time you want to use it and you might want to make minor modifications, then you can simply go ahead and clone or copy that object and then make the desired adjustments. And this will be a much faster and convenient process. Now let's go ahead and look at our particular use case and then it will make more sense. Now our use case will be based on a person that can either be a teacher that teaches a given course or it can be a student that has a particular teacher that teaches a particular course. But more specifically, when we focus in on the prototype design pattern, the person class is an abstract class that takes on the role of the abstract prototype. Now you might say, I said that the abstract prototype was an interface, but it can be either an interface or an abstract class. And then it defines the clone method that allows the client code to clone a teacher or a student object. And then the teacher implements the clone method. And when it is invoked, it'll return a copy of itself and the student also implements the clone method. And when it is invoked, it'll return a copy of itself too. Now you might say that you said it's useful when you construct an object that takes a very long time to build or when it is very resource intensive to construct an object. Now, first of all, it goes without saying that a person like you and I is quite complex. So if we had to create an object that contains all the attributes of a real human being, it would be entirely complex. But as mentioned before, I like to use very simple examples so that the focus is on the design pattern itself, in this case, the prototype design pattern, and not on some fancy implementation that might distract you from completely understanding how the pattern works. So now you've seen the class diagram. Next up, we are going to write the code. And if it hasn't made sense from the class diagram perspective, I'm certain it's going to make sense when you actually code the prototype pattern. It is now time to code the prototype pattern. The first thing that we need to do is to create our prototype or abstract prototype. So let's create a new class and call it person. Go ahead and make it an abstract class and then let's mark it as the prototype. Now, as you can recall from the class diagram, we need to define a clone method and that clone method needs to be implemented by the concrete prototypes. And since we are using an abstract class, we are going to make it an abstract method that forces the subclasses or concrete classes to implement this method. So let's say public abstract. It needs to return the same type of as the prototype and that's person. And let's call it clone. 
Okay. And then I'm also going to add a property for a name because a person has a name, whether it's a teacher or a student in our case. And that's also the reason I selected the abstract class rather than the interface so that we could share the name between the teacher and student object. So let's say public string name. And then I'm going to use the auto property syntax there. I'm also going to create a protected constructor. Now the protected constructor will only be accessible via the subclasses. Let's pass in a string parameter and then let's simply set our property. Okay, and that's all we have to do in our prototype class. Next up, let's create our concrete prototype one. So let's call it teacher. Let's extend the person class. And before we implement the abstract method, let's mark it as our concrete prototype one. Next, we can go ahead and implement the abstract class. In other words, the clone method. And then you'll see that it also expects us to pass the name parameter to the person classes constructor. So before I do that, I just want to add another property to the teacher. So a teacher will teach a course. So let's add a string property for the course name. Okay, and then let's go and add a public constructor for our teacher. So say public teacher. And then it's going to take in the, the name that will pass to the base. And it will also take in the name of the course. Okay. The name will pass to the base, like I said. And then we'll set our course property here. Okay. So now we have our teacher object that contains a name that it gets from the person base class and a teacher also teaches a course so for us to clone this we can conveniently use the member wise clone method that is on the object class now most of you will know that each and every class in .NET for example this teacher class actually extends object or in this case the person class extends object and the teacher class extends person that extends object. So you'll see what I mean just now. So let's say return. We are going to cast the member wise clone to the person class, our prototype. And let's say member wise clone. That's a method on the object class, like I mentioned. So let's go to the definition. And here you'll see that the member wise clone method is in fact on our object class and its purpose is to create a shallow copy of the current system dot object but in this case it'll be a shallow copy of the teacher class or specific instance of this class okay so this is all we have to do for the teacher class our concrete prototype one so let's create our concrete prototype two, and that is our student class. Again, go ahead and extend the person class, our prototype, and then let's mark this as our concrete prototype two. Implement the abstract class. Okay, again, before we implement our clone method, let's just define our student object. So I wanna go ahead and add another property and that would be a teacher. So we can say public teacher, call it teacher. So we are saying that a student has a teacher that teaches a course. Okay, and then we need to generate a constructor Again, we are passing the name to the base, our person class, which is our prototype. But we also want a teacher parameter to be passed here. And then we'll simply 
set our teacher property in the constructor here. Okay, so this is how our student object will look. Now there's no particular reason why I added the teacher, our concrete prototype one object in here. So that's not a rule by default. I just wanted to show you what will happen if we use a reference type or complex object rather than a primitive type. And you'll see what I mean when we test the code. And it's got something to do as a hint for now with the shallow copy or rather a shortfall of the shallow copy. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, and then let's implement our clone method. We can say return and then we'll say member wise clone again and we'll cast it to person. Okay, and that's all we have to do. So we can head over to our program.cs class. Okay, and then the next thing to do is to write our client code here in the program.cs class. So, so let's start by saying teacher, go ahead and add the using statement and then we are going to instantiate the teacher object only once. Okay, and then let's pass a name. I'm going to pass my own name. And then I'm going to say that I am teaching a course, something like creational design patterns in C sharp. Okay, and then we can make a clone of this teacher. Now, Rosalind is telling me that I can use the new expression so that it looks like that, which actually means new teacher, but I just want to use the old syntax. And then let's say teacher. Now this time we're going to make a clone. So let's call it teacher clone equals teacher dot clone. Now it returns the abstract prototype person so let's cast it to teacher okay so we have now successfully created a clone by invoking the clone method on the teacher object and then let's print something out to the console console.write line we can say teacher was cloned and then I'm going to use string interpolation then we'll say teacher clone dot name who teaches teacher clone dot course. Okay, then we can go ahead and do the same for the student object. So let's say student. This is our concrete prototype two equals new student. We'll say our student is called James and his teacher is the cloned teacher. And we can also create a student clone by invoking, just adding the cast so long by invoking the clone method on the student. Okay. And then let's also print something out to the console, console.write line. And then I'm going to say dollar or string interpolation, we can say student was cloned. And then we'll say student clone dot name. And then who is enrolled in, let's say student clone dot teacher dot name course not going to print out the course name here again but you can if you want to and then we are only cloning both the teacher and student objects at this moment we're not making any changes yet so let's just debug now 
in the console down here you'll say teacher was cloned sean who teaches creational design patterns in c sharp and student was cloned james who's enrolled in sean's course now i don't like to print out to the internal terminal or console like that so if you want to make it the external terminal you can go to launch.json and then change internal console to external terminal okay so what we can do now is to make a change to the teacher clone so i'm just going to add a comment here change the name of the teacher okay so we'll say teacher clone dot name equals let's change it to john from sean to john and then i'm going to print out the student clone part again and you'll see why i'm doing it now So here it says teacher was cloned, Sean who teaches creational design patterns in C Sharp. Student was cloned, James, who is enrolled in Sean's course. That's that second console that right line. And then the last one there ironically says John's course. Okay, so the reason that this happens is because a shallow copy only copies primitive types and not reference types. And teacher being a complex object property on the student object is a reference type and not a primitive type and that's why it's not being cloned or copied but how do we solve this problem and the answer is with a deep copy so shallow copy as i mentioned always only copies the primitive types but for reference types we need to do a deep copy and the how part of that is if we go to our student object because that is where our reference type is we can do the following so in order for us to make a deep copy we need to do the following let's start by creating a student object so let's say student call it student clone and then we'll get it from the member wise clone but we'll cast it to student this time member wise clone okay and then we can say student clone dot teacher this is the important part because that's the reference type that is not being copied instead the reference is being shared across clones so so we need to specifically and manually create a new teacher object but we need to pass the values at the time of instantiation in other words we can say this dot teacher dot name comma the course this dot teacher dot course okay so now we are actually creating a new copy of the teacher object and we're not referencing and then we can simply say return the student clone okay and then i'm just going to add a comment here deep copy we can put a breakpoint in there if you want and then let's go and test our code now so here it hits our clone method and then we get the student clone there you'll see the teacher name is Sean and the course is Creational Design Patterns in C Sharp. So that was obviously before we changed the name of the teacher to John. And then here, if we change it to John, you'll see that the teacher name remains Sean. And if we run it, you'll see that it now says Sean's course as we actually expected to say. But again, if you want a shallow copy, then just go ahead and undo the code to look like this clone method in the teacher class. Okay, and that is how you implement the prototype pattern.
If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.